Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. Once again, I'm super excited to go over today's Bible study. We will be beginning a new book, uh, book 21, I believe, um, which is going to be the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm currently reading from NIV Collegiate Bible, and my day has been, it's been another blessed day. Thank the Lord Almighty. Amen and hallelujah. And I hope and pray that everything has been well with you. And if not, welcome to another Lamp Bible study. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> and so, again, like, it's every single time I'm, like, ready to be fed. I'm ready to dive into the Word and hear what the Holy Spirit, what the Lord is leading or telling us or saying, what, how we're understanding, what message we're getting, all of it, it's all good, and all good things come from above. Again, have you ever wondered the meaning of life? Have you ever wondered why? Have you ever wondered why things happen? The book of Ecclesiastes is filled with answers above and beyond what we can even think of, and that's why definitely, this is definitely the Lord's Word, Bring his guidance into it. Pray for his wisdom and understanding. Um, We're continuing on with uh, Solomon because he wrote a couple of these books, man, and he shares his wisdom with us. So let's get started today and for today's Lamp Bible study in the book of Ecclesiastes, NIV version, and I'm starting right off with chapter one. Everything is meaningless. I, I, you're like, whoa, way to start off with, with the chapter, right? There's reasons for everything. Let's continue. <clears throat> the words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What does man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome. More than one can say, the eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. There is no remembrance of men of old, and even those who are yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow. Wow. Meaningless. Meaningless. Why is Solomon, why are these words coming out as saying meaningless? Well, he's going to get down to, he's going to, uh, we're going to get to understand what that is. Now, one thing immediately, and I already had discussed this with, <laughs> with a person earlier today, <clears throat> um, and not too long ago, actually, um, was, you know, sometimes I have insomnia or sometimes I don't get sleep. It happens. Um, and when it happens, I get to the next day and sure enough, everything's going. And it's like you want to hit that pause button or that do-over button. It's like, it's aggravating. It's like, no, it's another day and things are just going. Exactly. Exactly. Things continue. Life continues. That doesn't say that I'm not important. That doesn't not mean that we are not important. It means that there's a constant movement. And even though things may happen to us 
And even though things, sometimes we want to place a pause on things. We want to place a pause on life. We want to place a pause on things, whatever it may be, because of catastrophes, because of deaths. Oh my gosh, deaths in families, deaths of loved ones, um, tragedies, things that may happen, surprises, shocks, sometimes extreme happiness where you just want to push pause and yet time goes on. So think about that. Think about that in your life. How have you noticed how no matter what, things just continue? People continue to move about in their life. Things continue to happen. The air continues to move. The weather changes. The seasons change. Life continues and life changes. Think about that as we continue on in the book of Ecclesiastes. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Another just fantastic verse right here. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. And so you can see a pattern. You can see a pattern when it came to um, the people of Israel in the Old Testament. How when they uh, were in need, they reached out to the Lord. And then when they had everything that they needed, they did not. And we can look at that in our life, too. When everything is down and out, is that the only time that we're seeking the Lord? (laughs) Um, Someone said uh, there are um, times where people just go continue on with their life and they continue on doing things, seeking their goals and seeking what have what what it is, whatever that gain or glory or what goal is in life. And they kind of put the Lord in the back burner. They put worship and praise in the back burner because they know he's there. They recognize he's there. But right now, They're focused on accomplishing whatever they need to accomplish for themselves or their family or for what have you. And what we need to do is pull God, pull the Lord back into all things, including those times where you feel like, well, you know, this is simple. I believe I can do that. Pull the Lord back in. He is more than happy to do major things for you because he considers them little. (laughs) Uh, The Israel had went out to, this is back in Kings, I believe. Israel went out to, or it might be in Samuel, book of Samuel, but they went out to, um, with, Uh, uh, they went together to fight against an enemy and they didn't have any water and they had ran out completely. And so they had asked uh, a prophet and the prophet said, okay, well by morning or, you know, there's going to be water everywhere. There's going to be water all everywhere. There's going to be plenty of water. And sure enough, there was no rain cloud. There was no storm. There was nothing. But the next, very next day, there were there was plenty of fresh water, drinkable water everywhere, for their for themselves, for their animals and livestock, so for everything that they, everything was supplied by the Lord. Because and the prophet said, you know, you're asking something of the Lord. The pro the Lord is speaking through the prophet, saying, what you ask is nothing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> come to me 
Come to me. Come to me is what the Lord says. So think about those things. And I think about those too. I think about as well as there's nothing new under the sun when it comes to life, when it comes to things that is done in civilizations. Things get repeated because it's always a pattern where people can get to a certain point and they're like, well, I'm going to try this, but bad things mean it shouldn't happen to me. Not I, not me. I've done everything. Okay. So have you relied on the Lord? Exactly. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Wisdom is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I devoted, I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I've grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow, the more knowledge, the more grief. Why is Solomon saying this? Okay, so let's take a look at what Solomon, where Solomon came from. Solomon came from David. David and Bathsheba. I know, right? <laughs> Go back to the book of Samuel uh, and read about David and Bathsheba, 2 Samuel. Okay, so... Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And then where Sol Solomon came, he, he was the son of David, and he was already going to be proclaimed by the Lord as going to be the next in line. And so even though David did something to obtain Bathsheba, the Lord still was able to utilize what was done. And that's how who the Lord is. <laughs> he knows how to do it. And so um, he, he knows how to turn around sin to show his righteousness. And so here comes Solomon. And Solomon, um, the Lord went to him. The Lord asked uh, through a prophet, he said, okay, what do you, or actually it wasn't a dream. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, the Lord asked him, he said, okay, what do you want? Name it. And Solomon thought, you know, Solomon probably thought a lot. He could ask to be rid of his enemies. He could ask for riches. He can ask for fame. He can ask for prosperity, a long life. He asked for wisdom. He asked for wisdom so he could rule the people of Israel because he knew he was going to be in charge of the Lord's people, the Lord's chosen people of that time, the Lord's people, Israel. And he was like, what could, what do I need? I need to be able to be able to lead the people, to judge the people, to show by example how to uh, a walk with the Lord. And so he asked for wisdom. And the Lord, is the Lord already knew what he was going to ask for, but, he, you know, again, remember the Lord likes, because he created time and he likes to hear it. So he heard Solomon. He's, he was so, he was, he was so pleased with that answer. He didn't just give Solomon wisdom. He gave him a long life. He gave him fame. He gave him riches. He gave him comfort. He gave him peace on all sides. He gave everything that that he even didn't ask for to Solomon. Okay, so Solomon also <clears throat> is a human, and yes, he did 
definitely he got he was anointed. He he had a a walk with the Lord, but he also fell into temptations during his lifetime. He got to do a lot of things because of his of uh, because of his wisdom, because of how how he felt and what he did and what he thought. He got to experience a lot. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, things that Solomon even says that he, throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, is going to say that he's done it all. Things that weren't necessarily glorifying, glorifying the Lord either. And so where he's coming to, and I don't want to give it away right now, but think about things in our life where we seek the grind. We seek we seek prosperity. We seek a retirement. We seek all kinds of things that where are where are does our mind lie? Where does our goal lie? And are we seeking the Lord? Are we seeking the Lord? Or are we seeking things? Are we seeking capital? Are we seeking other goals? Are we allowing the Lord to be our guide, to help us seek those things, or to seek those things for us, to be reliant on our Lord and Savior? So those are things to think about as we continue to read. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? And so um, we'll get to it. It's, there's a lot here. So let's continue to read with Ecclesiastes 2. Pleasure, pleasures are meaningless. I thought in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is foolish. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding, uh, guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was worthwhile for men to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. Let's, let's listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. I acquired men and women singers and a harem as well, the delights of the heart of man. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work. And this was the reward for all my labor. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. So... Solomon, throughout his life, he, he started having multiple wives, and then he also started allowing for those wives to worship their own God. So he started doing things to please his wives, to please other people. He started to do things that he was thought was good for himself. He toiled in pleasures. Um, I know that there is um, the Hanging gar Gardens of Babylon, a historic thing, but there also were the gardens in Solomon's time, and it was magnificent. He He's describing just how beautiful, because remember, he was filled with wisdom. He was filled with so much wisdom and knowledge about things. And so he understood how botany he was you know understood you know how plants are, uh, work and how things work and um 
created uh, awkward, you know, these things for waterways and all kinds of uh, things to create this wonderful, beautiful city. He built homes and palaces. He built all these things. And he's saying, listen to what he said. He, he you know, he had, he amassed all of this wealth, silver and gold. And he did everything that his heart desired. And listen to what he says. Yet yeah, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaning, meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. So why is Solomon saying that? He's saying that he did everything that he ever wanted to do. He had everything that he wanted. He accomplished everything that he set out to do. There was nothing that he did not have or want or need that he wasn't able to get, obtain, and have. So why is he saying that it's meaningless? Think about this. What we seek in life, and we've and I've said it before in previous Bible studies, so let's go back and listen to some of those Bible studies. Who are we seeking? What are we seeking? The Lord is our fulfillment. Living our life with the Lord provides that fulfillment. And here, Solomon's going to give us this information to match. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Wisdom and folly are meaningless. Then I turn my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise man has eyes in his head while the fool walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Then I thought in my heart, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said in my heart, that too is meaningless. For the wise man, like the fool, will not be long remembered. In days to come, both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. Whoa, it just hits you. It hits you, <laughs> it hits you like a, a, a wave, like a tidal wave. Just a wave. Just you're standing there and the wave just hits you and the crashes. It hits you like a brick wall. So he say, he just he just said, listen to what he said. He says, then I turn my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? And then he goes on, but I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Both the, He's mentioning both the wise and the fool. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. Like the rich man and the poor man. Death. So what is it about our life? What is it about... Uh, the shortness of our life, what gives us that fulfillment? Is it seeking these short-term things that we believe may fill us with pleasure or joy? Or is it seeking a true fulfillment through our Lord and Savior? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I know, Solomon, wow, <laughs> He truly showed, he had wisdom. He had so much wisdom. And, and yet he's going to tell us just as, how much wisdom he had. Let's continue to read. Toil is meaningless. <clears throat> so I hated life 
because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool, yet he will have control over all the work into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a man may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then he must leave all he owns to someone who has not worked for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labors under the sun? All his days, his work is pain and grief. Even at night, his mind does not rest. This too is meaningless. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This, too, is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Listen to what Solomon is telling us here. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This, too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? Exactly. We have an all-powerful, he is all power, all glory, all holy, the creator, the redeemer, the provider of our salvation, the good shepherd. He is the great I am. He has created all. He created us. Without him... We weren't, wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be created. There would not be a creation. So Solomon is affirming this. He's saying that without the Lord, how would we even be here? How would we exist? How would we find joy? He goes on to say, To the man who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. So throughout life, bring past to present, um, we can see that there's hope, continual hope the Lord has for us. He always provides a way. There's always hope. So we always have these devastations and catastrophes, but civilization, people come back. People come back from the brink because the Lord provides the hope. The Lord provides that which we can look forward to, that that which we have been redeemed for, that which we know that we will spend eternity with Him. And we, our sins have been forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord knows. The Lord created all. The Lord knows. And he knows, he know, he knows that there are going to be people, people, people that do not believe, do not believe in him. It doesn't mean that he's not going to award them. It, but as you can see, a, there's a possibility right here. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. So think about that. There's a lot here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Sermon upon sermon upon sermon. And of course, lip balm time. Okay. So uh, let's continue to read in Ecclesiastes uh, 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. A time for everything. Okay, so this is this is huge. Um, this is actually a song. If you know the name, okay, so I know this is a song. I want to say it was in the 60s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 60s, or 70s. I want to go on the 60s or 70s. 
Um, correct me if I'm wrong. And if you do know the name of the group that sung this song, because it was a popular song, and people didn't even realize that it was biblical. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot there are a lot of songs out there that take words from the bible um in the comment section or in your journal diary whatever write them down take a moment a quiz for you can you think of songs or things that you've heard of that are literally words from the bible or while we read them, while we read them, think about them. While we get ready to read these together, think about them and say, and because it may come to mind, you may be like, oh, I, I, I heard this before. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> this is the Lord's wisdom. Let him, wow, let him reclaim, like, let him reclaim his holiness. Hallelujah. Okay, Ecclesiastes 3. <clears throat> a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to fear or tear down. I'm going to read this again. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn. And a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to, t uh, a time to t tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a time for everything. There is a time for you. There is a time for me. Bringing past to present. There is a time for everything. There is a meaning to life. And it is through our Lord and Savior. And... There is a time for everything. And he knows. And he knows. He's telling us. So when you do have feelings, there's time for hurt. There's a time for pain. There's also a time for joy. There's also a time for praise. There's a time for happiness. There's a time of hurt. And then there's a time of healing. There's a time for everything. And there's a time for you. The Lord... No, lo, knows it. The Lord wants it for you. The Lord loves you. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? And before we go on, another thing. Every time I turn on the news, say something. S some catastrophe just started or some new thing or they believe it's new or some, some, something throughout the earth, whatever it may be. And then I remember these words, and I'm like, is that really new? <laughs> we may think it's new, but is it really new? Let's continue to read. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men yet they cannot fathom what god has done from beginning to end i know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live <clears throat> that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil this is the gift of god I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Mm, listen to that. God does it so that men will revere him. 
Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. I also thought, as for men, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Man's fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Man has no advantage over the animal. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place. All come from dust, and to dust all return. That one said a lot right there. That That's uh, all go to the same place. All come from dust, and to dust all return. Let's continue. Who knows if the spirit of man rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth? So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work because that is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Exactly. The only one that's here is that we know of that is past, present, and future is our Lord and Savior. And so he's telling us right here, listen to what he's saying right here. He says, God does will, uh, I'm sorry, what God, everything, uh, know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can, and nothing taken from it. Basically, I know that through life, we believe that sometimes, okay, so there are some things in life that we believe um, as a society, as a culture, as a people, as a group, as a family, as a person, that if we don't do something that whatever plan that the Lord may have is going to fail, That is not the case and never will be. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. We don't have the control. We have options. We have options. The Lord can put it, the Holy Ghost, the Lord can put something into our heart. The Holy Spirit can... Put something into our heart to do. We can either do it or not. And we'll get to that in, all the way in Revelations. Um, but we have choices. Now, I can say um, that those choices do may have consequences. And it's difficult for us because we don't want to hear that. We don't want to deal with consequences. We just made a choice. Well, so did David when he decided to count Israel again. He made a choice. He wanted to see how many troops he had. He wanted to see what was going on with Israel. You know, he had been in many battles, and he was like, hey, let's let's do another count. And his commander was like, no, mm-mm, this isn't a good idea. Did you, did, did, did you ask the Lord? And David was like, you know what? I'm a king. You need to do what I say. Go and let's, let's count. <laughs> and uh and prophet came to David and said, "Um so Lord has a question for you. There's three three consequences. Which one do you want?" <laughs> and we don't want those consequences. We don't want them. So the best thing to do is seek the Lord first <laughs> in all things, right? That's Seek the Lord first, because he knows. We think that we know, and then something bad happens, and we're like, help, help. Had we seek the Lord first, he could have revealed the catastrophe lying ahead. And that's why 
things that we seek, when we utilize our own wisdom, when we utilize our own thoughts, it's meaningless. Goes to nothing. It's destroyed. But when the Lord's involved, that's a sure footing. That's our rock. That's a the good foundation. Solid. It's going to happen. So much here with uh, wisdom upon wisdom, sermon upon sermon. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read Ecclesiastes 4. <clears throat> Oppression, toil, friendly, friendlessness. Again, I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comfort. Power was on the side of their oppressor, and they have no comforter. And I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is he who has not yet been, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. And I saw that all labor and all achievement spring from man's envy of his neighbors. Mm. I'm going to read this again. Listen to what he's saying. Because this rings true even to today. Surprise. (laughs) And I saw that all labor and all achievement spring from man's envy of his neighbor. Hmm. This too is meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Do we do that? Bring past or present? Past. Many a times. So the Lord was the ruler of his people. He chose Israel. He was their ruler. He was their king. And yet the people, even after Moses, even after Joshua, even after the ju- they wanted a king, even after the judges, they wanted a king. And so the Lord knew it. The Lord knew. And he said, you know what? To his prophet, he said, uh, oh, Samuel, right? Correct me if I'm wrong comments. Um, he said, you know what? They're not rejecting. They're not rejecting you. They're not rejecting. They're rejecting me because I'm supposed to be who they go to, who, who we go to, but they're not, they're wanting to rely and have someone that they can put a person to lead them. They want a person, a a physical person there to take, to lead them, to be held responsible because they want to still be able to make decisions, but they, they want help when those decisions go awry, when they don't go as planned. Because they weren't really wanting to seek the Lord. And so what happened? The Lord went ahead and gave him a king. At the same time, he knew we we're going to have the ultimate king, which is our deliverer, Jesus, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus, through the line of David. But Who are we looking at today? Bring past to present. What are we looking at today? Why are we in a grind? Why do we have these goals? Why are we worried so much about the future and not necessarily listening to what the Lord has for us today? Are we we get so concerned about planning? for tomorrow even than taking a moment with the Lord to hear what he has to say about today. Think about that. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I know this is <laughs> this is a lot. This is a lot. Solomon, he's full of wisdom. He, I mean, I pray about it. Pray, take a moment. If you need to pause the Bible study, pause. Take a moment. Pray. Think about the Lord. Have a conversation with Him. Read. Go back and listen. Maybe go back and listen to a, another previous Bible study. But take that moment of your day. Take that moment 
and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord at all times. Let's continue to read. And I saw that all labor and all achievement sprang from man's envy of his neighbor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. The fool folds his hands and ruins himself. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor a brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked. And why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So there's a lot to this. Um, people immediately think on a physical level when we read over this. And remember, this is the living word. And every time I read it, it has multiple. It just the, it's what the Holy Spirit is speaking at that time. Listen to what he's ta- what he says. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. So people get this and they get immediately, um, even in the past, even in the Old Testament, even during that time frame, they get immediately like, does that mean I need, I have to be with somebody then? That means that whole thing about Genesis, Adam and Eve, you know, man for man not to be alone, so uh, he created Eve. So God created Eve. Okay, so you have that. You also have, why are we thinking that we're alone in life when we have a living God? Also look at it as in a relationship with the Lord. So yes, we may have friends and significant others and spouses and et cetera here on earth, right? We may have family and such, but we also have an addition. We also have a actual real does not is completely faithful, completely faithful, just the provider, the redeemer, the good shepherd. He is everything. And he, we have a living God. So why go through life alone thinking that you're alone when we're not, when you're not, when you have someone to turn to, when we have someone to turn to, to turn to, who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So think about that. So think about not just physically, not just like a person, an actual person, but physically and spiritually. We have someone to lean on. What, how much more better is life that we have the great protector, the good shepherd who's with us than to try to live life without him? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I know there's a lot here. (sighs) Okay. I'm going to reread some of this again. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him... Oh, I'm all the way back. (laughs) Let me... Let's actually... Let me go back to the correct spot. I I knew I lost my place. (laughs) Okay, let's get to you. Um, Advancement is meaningless. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to take warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. 
I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. There was no end to all the people who were before them, but those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. So there's a lot here because even Solomon, uh, his own children sought to rule immediately, even though Solomon was going to be the ruler, Absalom, you name it. There was a couple of them right there wanted to be the ruler, and even so much so as to want to off their own father. And so there was a lot, lot there. And then in Solomon, Solomon also, his children, his children, there were issues within his children. And the best thing to do, again, in all situations, is to rely on the Lord, is to have fellowship with the Lord. You know, I even think my parents, they said, there is, of all the things that my parents have done for me, there's Just one that is meaningful. And that is allowing me the opportunity to get to know the Lord, to understand who the Lord is, to be introduced to my Lord and Savior. And then it became on me whether or not I accept it, right? It comes back on us whether or not we accept. And I knew, I knew when the time came, I knew that I had a Lord and Savior. I knew, I knew that I had a living God. I knew that He loved me. I knew it. And so there are things that a parent can do, a person can do, a peer can do, a relative can do, a loved one. Something or someone to that can introduce someone to the Lord, wow, that is a gift. That is amazing, and all good things come from above. Hallelujah and amen. (sighs) What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Just joy, 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 amen, hallelujah. Let's continue to read Ecclesiastes 5. Stand in awe of God. Um, yeah, stand in awe of God. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin and do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. Standing in awe of God. It's similar to fear of the Lord, knowing who the Lord is. He's all power, all glory, all holy, the redeemer, the provider of our salvation, the good shepherd. He is the I am. He created all things. And knowing who he is and relying on him and have a relationship with him. <clears throat> that is so that when we do say, when we do say we want to do something, when we do find it in our heart to do something, fulfill it. Go through with it. Um. When the Lord leads you to 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 that stream, there, He's leading you to that stream for a reason. 
And yes, we still have a choice. Yes, we do. But not choosing it is meaningless. Listen to what the Lord has for you. And pray about it and accept it. Come, Ask the Lord, hey, help me to accept this. Help me to accept this way, this path, this thing that you, this task that you want me to do. Seek the Lord's guidance because he's there. He'll provide it. Look at Moses. Moses didn't want to, he was like, uh, I'm not a good speaker. Um, uh, they're going to know who I am. I can't, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm just one person. And the Lord was like, you're going to be able to do it. <clears throat> you're going to be able to do it. And Moses kept asking. So he's like, okay, well, you, uh, your brother's going to go along with you, but you're still going to be speaking. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and Moses was able to do it once he let go and let God. Amen. Hallelujah. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? All right. Let's continue. Riches are meaningless. Surprise. Are you surprised? Riches are meaningless. If you see the poor oppressed in a dis- district, injustice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things, for one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This, too, is meaningless. I'm going to read this portion again. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Oof, bring him past the present. It was same in the past. It was same Old Testament and thousands of years ago, all the way up to present day is exactly the same. Greed, gluttony, all of that is still the same today. Have you seen it? Have you watched it? Have you witnessed it? Have you been a part of it? Think about those things. Have you witnessed it? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. I've seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner, or wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when he has a son, there is nothing left for him. Naked a man comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, he, so he departs. He takes nothing from his labor that he can carry in his hand, This, too, is a grievous evil. As a man corners, or I'm sorry, as a man comes, so he departs. And what does he gain since he toils for the wind? All his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Then I realize that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. So this is several different things right here. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. <clears throat> so again, the greed, gluttony, and everything. Think about it. Bring past to present. Um, as you you've, you've probably seen it, the more wealth a person has, the more security that they have to have. They have to have twenty four hour surveillance, gated communities, guard stations, uh, alarm systems. Ring a bell. Constant monitoring, more security, an army, a detachment. Because they're wealthy. 
stop bring joy and freedom? Who are we seeking? Also, too, the Lord provides wealth. The Lord provides the wealth and prosperity as well. The Lord may provide it. And listen to what he says. Listen to what he says here. God gives any man wealth and possessions. Or I'm sorry, moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. It's a gift. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart, being joyful, being blessed, wanting to bless others, to be a blessing, to continue to have that relationship with the Lord and seeking the Lord at all times and honoring the Lord by sharing his love with others. So prosperity can be given by the Lord as well. But sometimes man can take that prosperity and get selfish with it, get greedy with it. Think about those things. It's a lot here. Do you see that? Have you seen that? Have you been a part of it? Have you witnessed it? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Are we starting to see how Solomon is addressing these things, how he's addressing life, how he's addressing our own thoughts and feelings and things that we think about today? It's amazing, right? There's a lot here. Um, Let's do a quick review. So we started off in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 1, of course, and meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Because when we toil without the Lord, when we do things ourselves, it's like chasing the wind. When we concentrate on the grind, we all go to the same place. We all pass away. We can't take it with us. It's not like you can take your security and you can tell them to empty out your accounts and put it in your your casket, because you're going to afterlife with it. (laughs) Sorry, it's just going to rot. It's going to eventually dissolve, decay, and come back to what it was. Nothing. But we we can have meaning, and that's through our Lord. On to Ecclesiastes 2. The wise man has eyes in his head while the fool walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. Exactly. The fool and the wise man, the rich and the poor. All people, culture, societies, we live and then we pass away. What do we do in life, though? What do we do? Are we seeking foolishness and folly, chasing the wind? Or do we have a purpose? Is there meaning through the Holy Spirit, through our Lord and Savior? On to Ecclesiastes 3, a time and a place for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. For everything. Have you thought of that song yet? (laughs) There's a time and place for everything. It's okay to have grievance, grievances. It's okay to be upset and sad. It's okay because there's a time and there's because it's okay to be joyful. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be blessed. There's a time for everything and there's nothing new under the sun. No matter how, maybe because we just saw it, but there's nothing new under the sun. On to Ecclesiastes 4. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. 
If one falls down, his friend can help him up. That's right. When we fall down, we have the Lord that we can rely on to help us up. For people who don't seek the Lord, who don't believe, who do they have to pick them up? Who do they have to provide them that salvation, that redeeming grace? Pray for them. Pray for people. Show them, be a reflection of love. Show them that the Lord loves them too as well. They still, they have opportunity. Their whole life, they have an opportunity. Stand in awe of God. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to a vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. So, again, let your yeses be yeses and noes be noes. I hear today, well, I promise, I, I it, cross my heart, hope to die, you know, all of that. <laughs> uh, yes, I, 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 I name it on my father's such, you know, like, there's so much that our yeses should be yes because we should have integrity. Way to build that is with the Lord, reliance on the Lord. The Lord can provide the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge to complete the task, to, to maintain, to get obtain the goal. Think about those things in our lives, in your life. Over all of today's Bible study, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you once again for joining me in another Lent Bible study. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through His Holy Word. Please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Lamp Bible study comes out every Tuesdays and Thursdays with highlights throughout the week and flashlights on Fridays. So we're excited to continue through the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna if we're gonna finish on the next one or if we're gonna if we're gonna split it up. More than likely, because there's a lot in Ecclesiastes, and there's only, I believe, six more chapters. It might be split up. Um, I'm not quite sure just yet, because there's a lot of meanings. There's a lot of in-depth, and we can really have more of a discussion. So I might take our time just to touch more on the next uh, Bible study. But So we'll continue through the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, if you have any uh, questions or oh, prayer requests, leave them in the comment section. Um, we all can definitely pray. Where there's two or more, amen and hallelujah. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section. Check out the Instagram page. I will be updating it eventually. <laughs> I can always get behind. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, or if you want to do more with Lamp Bible Study, if you want to become a Bible reader with Lamp Bible Study, feel free to reach out. There is an email contact on the contacts page of the YouTube channel. And so super excited for, can't wait for our next Bible study. So wherever you are, have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening, and a blessed night. God bless.